Angular Resolve, an interface that classes can implement to be a data provider. Angular Resolve is there to help us load data before navigating to a specific route. The router will resolve that data before the route is finally activated. Let's think for a second what happens if we need to catch some data from a server and display that data into our application. And of course this task would be asynchronous if we try to grab the data from the server. We can load that data after the component is rendered or we can have that data available to us when the component renders. With Angular Resolve we make sure that when we hit a certain route and the component renders, the component already has that data available to us. In this video, we will implement a resolver and we will add a loading spinner that will start and stop automatically based on the state of the resolver and the router events. Now let's go ahead and create and implement a resolver in our application. I have this application with three routes, home, products and about. And we want to implement the resolver in the products route so that when a user clicks on the products, we will activate the resolver and prefetch the data before the component loads. For that, we need to create a service and we can go ahead and create a products resolver service. Now open up the products resolver service and implement the resolve interface. And since resolve is a generic interface, we can pass our model or interface for the product. So with that, we can go ahead and create the interface and a product will have properties like ID, name, price and description. Then we can just import the interface and pass it as an array of product. The resolver also requires us to use a method called resolve, which takes two arguments and one of them is the route snapshot and that will be the activated route snapshot and the router state snapshot, which will be the router state snapshot. Next, the output of this can be either an observable or a promise or an array of products if the task is not asynchronous. Next, in our resolve method, we just need to return get products from a product service, which we will create now. So go ahead and create the product service. Next, inside our product service, we will create the get products method, which will return a promise and it will resolve to an array of products. Uh, these products were generated using the faker.js library, and this is wrapped in a timeout function just to fake out a real call to our API, and we will return the products after three seconds. Now that we have the service created, we can go back into our products resolver and return the get products method. Considering we have product service and our products resolver implemented, we need to implement the resolver in our router. So go ahead in our app routing module and for the products route, we will add a resolve property which basically takes key value pairs and we can pass the products resolver here and this will make the products available to us as a property when our product component loads. Next, we need to get the products data in our products component and we need to display that. In our products component, I have created some cards for our product and a simple ng4 loop. I have also added some CSS and next in the products component, we will create a property for our products, which will be an array of product. And in our constructor here, using the activated route, we can grab the snapshot data, which holds the static and the resolved data of this route with the key of products. Now this key of products is the same key we passed in our routing module in the resolve property for our products route. Whatever name we give there, we pass the same name in the snapshot data property here. You can also subscribe to the data changes if you have values that update constantly and if you have an observable setup instead of a promise. Next, we need to set up the loading spinner. For that, I got a loading spinner from loading.io and we can add the appropriate HTML and CSS into our app component.html and app component.css. Now don't worry about this if it's too fast. I will have a link to this repository uh, and this project down in the description. Next, we need to listen to the router events in our app component.ts file and check if the instance of the event is navigation start. In that case, we will set a loading property to true. Otherwise, if the event is an instance of navigation end, navigation cancel or navigation error, then we set the loading property to false. And just like that, we now have an automatic loading spinner every time we use the resolver for our routes. Now it's time to save all of our changes and preview our progress. As you can see here, I have the three routes. And when I click on the products route, you can see we get the loading spinner and we get the products resolved after three seconds. And just like that, we have our application all set up and working. That is all for Angular Resolve. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. 
Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.